promised the guys I work with that I would do this. How are we doing in Structure Con? Okay? All right. I, I just had to do that, right? The obligatory, let's get excited. Um, so my name is Rebecca Groh, and I work for the University of Utah, and I'm kind of in a unique position. Um, I actually work for the Teaching and Learning Technologies office, but I'm an online program coordinator kind of embedded in a college. So we're kind of trying some fun things out, and um, this job's been for about a year and a half. And I'm really excited because I get to be in the trenches with the faculty. I was before, but now I'm learning about the department and the way the structuring is and working with chairs and our dean. And so I really get a chance to do whatever I want. Isn't that the best job? Well, John's looking at me, no you don't. Um, the dean's letting me try out lots of different things. And so that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today, a collaboration with um, the director of student um, engagement in the College of Social and Behavioral Science. And Bobby wasn't able to be here today, um, but you'll hear from her a little bit later. So um, we came together to collaborate about student engagement and community building um, through online academic advising. And I just wanna get it out of the way to shout out to um, some of the women that helped with this project and they're continuing to work on the project. Bobby Davis, like I said, she's the Director of Advising and Student Engagement um, in the college. And then April and Nicole are two of our advisors, one with economics and one with psychology. So just to share a little bit about the mission that we have at the University of Utah for academic advising. Um, academic advisors at the U are educators and problem solvers who advocate for students. They navigate their personal journey of higher ed and attain their academic goals. Through inclusion and connection, academic advisors open doors to new opportunities for students' self-awareness and growth, empowering students to define their roles as citizens within local and global communities. It's kind of a cool mission. Um, and we wanted to kind of partner up with this um, together. So here's our problem. Um, given that there's a changing landscape, ever-changing landscape in higher ed, and how do we meet the needs of our diverse student populations? Um, what kind of delivery methods can we utilize from the educational academic world and bring that into the advising world? Um, and also, we wanted to make sure that we achieved our mission and our goal, which was to engage students in a way that meets their unique definitions of success. So here are some of the things that were changing for us in the college. Um, one, we are now um, in the process of finishing up our economics undergraduate degree fully online and our psychology degree undergraduate fully online. We also have our um, family and consumer, our family and human development degree that just started, and um, our sociology degree is in the process of getting accredited, so that can be offered fully online. And so we were coming up against all these really cool things and initiatives for the uh, college that they wanted to go ahead and go out and um, push this online initiative with their students. Students have been asking them for more fully online courses. They needed flexibility with their schedules. And then we also have that diverse student population. Adult learners, millennials, we are a transfer school. Like, I mean, um, well, not the word I wanted to use. Um, we have a lot of people that just kind of commute, a commuter school, that's what I was trying to say. Sorry, you probably knew what I was trying to say. Um, so we're a huge commuter school. So people can go to extensions throughout the state. Um, they can come on campus, but we wanted to meet and address the students' needs um, specifically for advising. And one of the best practices that advising has is to meet the students where they are at. That's like one of their top mottos. And I always like to do this with faculty when I would meet with them and consult with them in Canvas, um, anything to do with their class. I wanted to meet the faculty where they were at. And so Bobby and I got together and we thought, we've got this problem. Um, we're, we're gonna have all these online degrees within the next year. We've got to help our advisors meet the needs of our online students, which their needs are gonna be just a little bit different than the students that are coming face to face. And we're also gonna have a mixture of online and face to face. So how are the advisors going to help their students um, 
And how are we going to provide that? What, what are we going to use for that? And um, Bobby, yeah, let's talk about virtual advising. How, how can we meet their need? And through this method of virtual advising, we're able to meet the mission to be inclusive and connected um, to open new doors and new opportunities for our students. And um, I'll share some examples of things that have happened with the technologies that we've used with our students. Um, so we, we've got this problem and we want to find a solution. Um, so our solution was to meet the students where they were at, right? We're gonna use the motto that we've been using and we're going to use the solutions that are available at the university. So um, that meant utilizing Canvas, which is our LMS. Students are already going to Canvas for their courses and maybe some other types of things. So why can't we provide that advising for them inside of Canvas? Uh, Cranium Cafe is a tool by ConnectsEd. It's an online meeting tool. And we were piloting it and we have now uh, signed an agreement that we will be using them. So this is the online meeting software that our advisors are going to be using now across campus. And our faculty can also use this. And we're leveraging Qualtrics. We now have a campus-wide license um, to Qualtrics. We had a departmental and college one. So we were utilizing that to do our surveying um, with our students. So, our Canvas template. We decided to use the flipped model because what we were hearing from the advisors, we went and had a, a meeting with them, and we said, what, what kind of problems are you having in your meetings with your students? Um, one of the advisors said, I have met with this student five times before we actually got down to what they needed because they don't know what they need, right? They, oh, I know I have to come see you, but oh, I don't, I don't remember why. So I've set up an hour appointment or a half hour appointment, and then it's really ineffective for both the advisor and for the student because nothing gets done. And they say, well, come back, fill out this form, whatever, um, do some homework. So we decided to kind of train the advisors to do something they might have been doing, but now we wanted all of them to do it. Have them do the homework before they come to the session. So what we decided to do was create a template inside of Canvas for all of our college departments, and we called it an advising center. Not a course, because they started freaking out when we called it. We originally had virtual advising course, and they freaked out and said, am I going to be graded on this? There's assignments in here. Is this going to go against, you know, whatever? And we're like, no. So we decided to change the title to Advising Center because that's really what it is. It's a central place to get advising information for a particular department. Um, and then uh, we decided to give the advisors, once the template was created, and we sat down with them, trained them on Canvas, to go ahead and change it how they wanted to. And I can't show you one of the examples, but at the end, you can go to a website. We've got an open Canvas course where you can see the economics um, virtual advising or the advising center course. So we um, allowed them to do any additional pages they needed. We talked about what should be in there with Bobby, who is their um, boss. And we realized that at our home page, we wanted to have a welcome page that talked about who the department was, who the advisors were, sort of the people, the welcome um, campus resources that were available to students. Uh, right now, I mean, you might all have the same similar experience where you go to your institution's website and you're looking for something and you have to go to five different places to find it. Students get frustrated after being the third, second, third click, or now you gotta go here to get this and now you gotta go here to download that. So we really wanted to make it super easy for them to get all the resources they need. So we created a page uh, for all the campus resources, women's resources, scholarships, um, you name it, ASUU, our student government. And then we wanted to have a discussion section where the advisors could actually do walk-in advising online, so virtual walk-ins. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that, about how that went. And we also wanted to have discussions where students could sell their books 
to their fellow students, right? So we, and, and some questions they might have, and then um, targeting the groups in the class. So what about the transfer students? What about the new freshmen? What could mentoring kind of happen in that capacity? And we're still working kind of on that community building um, piece. And then we have modular sections um, where we're breaking things down by major um, technology at the U and different things, and we'll kind of show you what that looks like. And um, to talk a little bit about the community building, it was a really huge um, aspect of this course. And um, at the University of Utah, uh, we have something with our Center for Teaching and Learning Excellence called Communities of Practice and people getting together with like interests, and the only difference was they were learning how to do it better as they interacted regularly. And we were like, how can we take this same concept and apply it to advising? How can we get the students mentoring each other, coming to this place of engagement, um, letting them know in the announcement tool things that are happening, or um, having them share stories with the, the incoming freshmen, like what I learned, this is what you should know, um, kind of stories. The next slide is just an example of what the home page looks like. Um, so they can go ahead and put their, um, the name of their department. The picture in the middle is totally flexible. A lot of them have decided to put things like pictures of economics or psychology that made more sense or flyers that they use. Um, so we can go right here to the start here section, which is really what brings you to a welcome. It also brings you to the people. Um, we also have the advising basics is what we decided to call our module area. So here's all the basic information that you need to know about the department's advising and what, and what needs to be done. We also had our campus resources on the homepage and then the questions to just kind of get you right to the discussions. Um, making that available and customizing everything sort of on the, on the home page. And I know I can't show you the class, but talking a little bit about the types of modules that we have in Advising Basics. So when it's time for graduation, at the U there are four different websites that you have to go to to get like the complete information about graduation. All they did was grab that information and link it all into one awesome spot. Um, and in fact, when we get to the statistics, that's one of the pages that was most frequented by the econ students towards the end of the semester when it was time for graduation. So providing them major information, minor information, if there are certificates, um, what do they need to bring to their first appointment? If they're brand new to the advising, what can they expect? There's a contract, so we have sort of a syllabus where this is what we expect from the students and this is what you can expect from the advisor. So letting them know what is advising and how can you utilize that? How can we connect you to our career services office? And so there's a lot kind of going on and um, I apologize that we can't dive into Canvas today, but you guys will be able to get in there later and just go and explore. So talking a little bit about the assessment tools. So we started this project in um, August of last year, so August 2016. I was about to say 2017, but we're almost there. And um, the first uh, department that we used was sociology and got them going, and then we had econ and psychology follow right after that. So we were using some different methods of assessment with our courses, so of course we did Qualtrics surveys out to the students after three months of being put into this advising center course. They were all told through the normal listserv they had for their department that they were all going to be put into a course and um, then we wanted to get feedback from them because we just, we just put them in there, right? And we wanted to hear what they had to say. Was it easy to navigate, et cetera? And then we actually utilized Canvas data and John Thomas is in here, he has a presentation tomorrow talking about how we utilize the Canvas data and through MySQL and grabbing that out and being able to show that um, to you today. So our survey questions for student feedback were before Canvas, where would you go for quick answers to advising questions? Um, what method of academic advising do you most prefer? because we have our walk-ins, we have our phone call, we have email, we have face-to-face -face online. 
using Canvas, how effective has it been to enhance your academic advising experience? We wanted to capture the students that had never used Canvas and they were new freshmen, or we wanted to capture those that had had it both ways and was Canvas helping them more or less or um, in between? In what ways has it been effective? And then we wanted to know how they would improve it. What were we missing? What did we need to add into that? And in fact, the College um, Family and Consumer Studies, they actually did a focus group for their students, fed them free pizza, and then said, if you had an academic advising course, what would be in it? And so we actually got some really good feedback about what to do next when we, when we talk about that, just from that focus group that we did with the students. So here were the results that we got from the students. And I'm hoping this kind of comes through. So um, for our first question, where were you going when you had uh, questions? 38% were going to their academic advisor. Awesome, right? The system is working. They're going to um, their advisor. 50% were going to the website, which was probably then taking them right to the advisor because the information was inconsistent or that it was all over the place. 8% um, were going to faculty members. 4% were asking family and friends. Hey, I know you were a psychology major, you know, who's the best teacher, all that kind of stuff. Um, the second question, um, what types of meetings or ways would you want to communicate? And 53% of them wanted a pre-scheduled appointment, which I actually found fascinating because students, <coughs> oh, I apologize. <coughs> <coughs> students are too busy now, right? And so I was really surprised. I'm sorry, I have to take some water. <laughs> students were real, I was just really surprised that they wanted a pre-scheduled appointment. But maybe that could also mean an online pre-scheduled appointment. 13% and 13% uh, for online advising, for email, 17% for walk-in, and then the phone appointment, I believe, was seven or six, I can't remember, or five. Apologize, forgot to write that down. Um, so some of these results were pretty, pretty telling for Bobby as well. She's like, wow, you know, I thought there would be more of a, a push to the online. And then how effective has Canvas been since you started using it for advising? So we actually had it pretty across the board, 30% moderately effective, 30% slightly effective, 20% not effective at all, 15% effective, and then way effect, or very effective was 4%. So I think it was kind of a half and half, right? Uh, and those people that thought it was slightly effective probably were seniors or transfer students that felt like and those that thought it was not effective at all were those groups that maybe weren't being represented right off the bat of having value added for them. Um, so here are some of the things that they liked. Students like quick access to the FAQs. They want to be able to go and get exactly what they need so they can do it and be prepared. They love using the same platform that they already had for Canvas because announcements that would be sent from the advisors would get into their notification feed and so they'd know about things happening in their department um, on the level as well as that were happening with their courses. And they could hit it all on their mobile phone too. Mobile was huge in here and we wanted to make sure that anything they did was responsive and they'd be able to take that with them. And students love the flexibility with their schedules. They like to be able to be met whenever they can be met with how they want to be met with. Um, and just a, a quick story here before we go to the, the results um, from Canvas. Um, we were utilizing Cranium Cafe for a meeting with a student, an advisor in psychology, and the student actually has issues, um, some some issues, spatial issues with people. And for her, she felt like it was so awesome that she could do this online advising because she was in her pajamas. She, she could have an engagement with her advisor and she didn't feel like she was being threatened. So, I mean, I don't think we really thought about those types of things. So people that might have PTSD or, uh, you know, some emotional issues or, you know, service, dot, whatever it might be, that we're able to meet them where they're at. And I think that really displayed um, that for us. 
So here's some Canvas results that we got from the data. Um, I have one for each one of the courses, and we'll talk a little bit about um, how many students that were in there. So the top 10 Econ Canvas pages visited, well, they, they utilized the template. They went to the people's page, right? Um, they went through the modules index, um, but they went to the Econ major page graduation ceremonies and commencement. Remember I told you that as soon as she put that in, <clears throat> it went up. Transcripted emphasis page, academic advising and what to expect. There are 760 students that were added into this economics course. And here's a chart to show you. We had 22% that did not accept, that are still kind of sitting there in limbo. And we, we want to know why, right? Why aren't they accepting? We think those are those seniors that don't think there's added value in here. Transfer students. Um, uh, we had students that accepted. We had 35 students accept, but then they didn't do anything. And maybe they felt obligated because it was there. They wanted to get it out of their notification stream. They didn't want to keep seeing you've got a new course. Um, so they accepted it, and then they didn't do anything with it. And then we had 43% that accepted it and then actually were active in the course. They were either looking at content, they were doing discussion postings. Um, and so it's kind of interesting as we sort of go through all the different groups um, to see. So for psychology, all of these, the top two pages that they went to, were part of the tool that we created for them, part of the template. Um, what to expect from the advising page. Campus resources was a huge one. Um, and then applying to graduate school, um, we did have, we have a section on intro to online learning because we wanted to reach out to those students um, so that they understood what online learning was. And you can kind of see, depending on the department, there are some different pages that would come up. Now we have 1,176 students that we added to the psychology page. And 40% of those accepted and are active in the course. Um, and of course, we're still asking those questions about the other um, two sets of groups who didn't participate um, in the course. And then here are the sociology um, pages visited. And theirs are a little different. Um, they were our first one. We kind of did some changes to the page um, as we went along with that. And so, um, but very pretty consistent. That campus resources page is in there, what to expect for your first appointment. So those things that advising thought was important were coming up from the students. So they have a smaller group, 373 students were added. Um, and of course, they have a pretty high percentage of exception as well. So I think across the board, all three of those departments had a pretty high acceptance and um, active uh, opportunities in the course, which is actually very surprising to me. Working with faculty and students for so long, I'm like, oh, it's going to take forever to adopt, or oh, they're not going to, they're just not going to do anything, but I hope they're going to do something. We built this awesome tool for them, and they surprised us. They actually started doing things. Um, in one of the courses, students started just automatically creating their own discussions and sharing with students these really cool possibilities that were happening on campus without us nudging them just giving them a platform and a page um, to go ahead and do that. And we also asked the advisors for their feedback because hopefully we were also minimizing and making it more flexible for them and their time as well. Because if they're gonna do more work using Canvas, what's the point in, in creating this for them? So in what ways has Canvas been effective, ineffective? Have you found that using Canvas has provided more or less flexibility? Um, they could not be here today. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, them. I brought them with me. So we're gonna hear from April, and then we're going to hear from Nicole, and we're gonna hear from Bobby about their experiences. Hi, instructor Khan, 2017. Um, welcome from the University of Utah. Uh, my name's April Sanders Abrilila, and I am a psychology undergraduate academic advisor um, with the College of Social Behavioral Science. So we're here today to talk about just 
our campus pages and how it's helped benefit student engagement and be on my side. Um, so before I started using Canvas, um, our student engagement was actually pretty, pretty low. It still is a little bit compared to the amount of students that we have, but it's definitely increased. Um, to give you an idea, we have about 800 to 1,000 students in psychology, whether they're declared, minors, majors, or if they're pre-psychology students. Um, so whenever I first started, we would send out mass emails to students, we would have a lot of unsubscriptions, um, individuals and students really wouldn't come to any kind of student events, we have a lot of student clubs. So I tried to figure out what would have been the best way to get students more involved. So talking with Rebecca, we figured Canvas is going to be the best um, possible way to let students know of events that are happening um, through the department, um, just because Canvas is a tool that they're already using with their classes, so why not go ahead and give it a try? So um, we implemented Canvas kind of as like a pilot um, for the spring 2017 semester, so in January, and I really mainly used it for like some of the content, but really more of the, the calendar function to let students know when there's something going to be happening in the, in the department, um, as well as on campus, the student club, student activities, etc. So after we started using that, we have a lot of students who are a little bit more engaged um, with our student advisory committee at weekly coffee hours, as well as like our registration events. Um, so that's, that's a positive um, of that, right? So then additionally, we also had discussions and announcements. So to let students know, instead of like our weekly emails that I would send out on the mass email, um, just let them know via Canvas, show them flyers, show them a lot of different um, marketing and uh, promotional uh, courses that we were offering as well. So we've seen an influx in that too through um, utilizing Canvas. Um, so it's really been a positive impact on, on students. Um, future use, and we're kind of going through that process right now, but Rebecca and I started a new section so that we can track data a little bit better on um, student usage. So we're still using a main course, but having like sections for every academic year um, and additionally groups. So individuals that are interested in research, internships, we're having specialized groups for that so that we can see um, what students are interested in. Um, some of the drawbacks from it are students who are unsubscribing, asking how you get, how you basically get unsubscribed from a Canvas list. Um, Basically, it was just because whenever you send out announcements, they receive notifications in their email. So really trying to educate uh, students on how to set their um, set their notifications on Canvas is really a, a big drawback that we kind of had a little bit. We've tried to put in modules, things like that, but it's not, it wasn't as helpful because we seen, saw a lot of people either accept and not be active or accept and just request to be. Um, deleted from the course. Um, and that's it. That's about it. That's the only drawback. The really benefit is seeing more student engagement, which is what we wanted. So it's positive all in the end. We'll keep continuing to use it. Thanks. Yeah. She's kind of sassy, so you'll kind of get that from her. I'm at 2017. I'm Nicole O'Shea, Academic Advisor for the Department of Economics at the University of Utah. I use Canvas to connect with my students outside of advising appointments. I often joke that my Canvas page is my brain in electronic format because I've included all of the advising general answer uh, information that I uh, am asked on a regular basis. Before Canvas, I had two different email inboxes that would frequently have 20 or more emails in them with students asking general questions. What class do I need to take in, in spring? Uh, how do I find this information? Through Canvas, I'm able to create a repository for that information. It's all modular, so if they're a freshman, they click on the freshman tab, second year, etc and it really walks them through their undergraduate experience. 
Um, I'm hoping that, or excuse me, let me back up a minute. Uh, since Canvas, my inbox has reduced drastically. Right now I maybe have seven emails, which I think is much more manageable. Uh, it's still running two inboxes, but seven a piece is, uh, it's, it's much better. So my future use for Canvas will be to create graduate advising pages for both my master's degree population and my PhD population. Uh, it'll be helpful for the PhD population because they're also instructors and sometimes they need policy information and they don't know where to find it and now I can put it somewhere easy for them to navigate. Uh, the, the benefits, as I've said before, easy to navigate. Students are already familiar with the system because of their courses so they know how to go into that and, and uh, walk through the information. The only drawback that I've had so far is that students aren't exactly excited about the number of uh, announcements that they get from me. I interact, uh, I, I tell them pretty much everything through Canvas and every time I do that, there's an announcement in their inbox. Uh, so that's been something that I've had to overcome through uh, positive uh, advising, but it's a good problem to have and I've managed that also through uh, making sure that the stuff that I'm putting out there is relevant to the population. So thank you for your interest in our Canvas page. Or um, Bobby, who is the Director of Student Engagement for the college. And Bobby's gonna talk a little bit about our collaboration also on top of um, what she's been doing. Hello, Instructor Caught 2017. My name is Bobby Davis. I'm the Director of Advising in the College of Social and Behavioral Science here at the University of Utah. The reason I'm talking to you today is to let you know of a new initiative that we've started in our college. We really want to meet students where they're at, and traditionally in developmental advising, that really means where they're at academically, socially, emotionally, but in this case, it's meeting students where they're at physically. We have a number of online programs that we're just instituting, and we really need to be able to provide academic advising and a quality experience. So we worked with our great online coordinator, Rebecca Grow, who's presenting to you today, to develop Canvas courses to really help students get the advising that they need. Um, I used this a number of years ago when I was an advisor in family and consumer studies and working with graduate students. I really noticed that students didn't come in for traditional appointments. They were really calling, um, they were doing phone appointments or emailing, and I really wanted to step up the game and have in quality advising experiences. So I worked with Rebecca a number of years ago to develop that Canvas course, and it was a big hit. We were really able to keep students in the program and help them towards graduation where our rates were really going down. So we decided, why not try that again at a larger level? And so we now have advisors in psychology, economics, sociology that have campus courses and they use it for different reasons, either through engagement or really to add to that academic advising piece. We have more advisors that are going towards that in political science and family consumer studies in the future. So benefits for that include really being able to meet students again where they're at. They can access this information 24 seven um, they can have that quality experience and get that really um, connectivity piece and current information right when they need it. Uh, kind of some drawbacks that we're looking at is kind of that management of how many students are on it. I mean, that's growing, so we're looking at different ways that we can manage that. And really how to keep students engaged. We really need to have advisors that have time to be able to add to that, add calendar events, add information. Really, if it becomes stale and the advisors aren't using it on a regular basis, students aren't going to use it on a regular basis. So it's looking at best practices that we can use as advisors. So I'm really excited where we have been, where we're going with this, and really how this is going to impact our students, their graduation, and their overall experience here at the University of Utah. So thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great conference. It's for time now. It went by super fast, but... Um... Anyway, let me get to the next slide. This is just a summary of what Bobby and Nicole and April were talking about, about the different benefits that they saw from having this advising center course, and then some of the drawbacks that we're just talking about. Um, one of them being the notifications. Well, they were getting notifications from the college and from the department and from the institution, so who sends out what? That's kind of a conversation um, that we'll be having coming up soon. And then here are some of our next steps. 
So April already started doing groups in Canvas, like trying to get like-minded people together, mentoring, um, targeted videos. I wanted to show you some today, but um, hopefully we'll be able to add that to our website. Uh, how to do processes, um, really easy to walk them through that. E-learnings, really taking them through the steps of like going to graduate school, what's graduate school like, how do courses work. Um, targeting specific audiences, like they talked about, specific transfer students, um, et cetera, additional departments. Um, we are adding on family consumer studies, our poli sci department, and then one of our programs, the MPP program. Online advising meetings, now that we are fully with Cranium Cafe, we're going to be doing trainings with the advisors to start having online advising, which psychology already does have an online advisor. Graduate courses, um, Nicole talked about that and engaged facilitators. Bobby talked a little bit about that. If the facilitator is not engaged, the students will not find value and they won't go and then they will ask to be taken out. What's the point of this versus the website? So I think of the Canvas Advising Center course as retention and I think of the website to get them to the institution and to get them into the department and then it's up to the advisors to kind of keep them there. I feel really bad we didn't have time for questions, or we might. Um, here's my contact information. I do have cards up here as well. And this is the website I was talking about. Um, it's csbsonlineadvising.weebly.com. You can go here. Everything I just talked about is there. And there's also a link um, where we talk about the um, Canvas template to go to an open Canvas course for our Economics Advising Center course. And you guys can go play around and look at it um, and give us your feedback. What are you doing at your institution? What ideas came to you from the presentation and or from looking around? We really want to collaborate with, with other institutions and see what they're doing. And hopefully, you know, we can um, come back and uh, share uh, how things are going a year later and um, down the road. So thank you guys so much. Do we have time for any questions? One, oh, one question? Oh, we have two minutes, sweet. All right, I had lots of taffy. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Hello? Yeah. Um, you were talked about the discussion board or whatever where students could exchange books from past semesters. How does your bookstore feel about that? Um, we never asked. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking ours wouldn't be too thrilled. Yeah. So the question was, what about you know the exchanging of books, how the bookstore fill? Students are doing it all the time on campus. They're putting flyers up at the department. Hey, call me. You know, we uh, we haven't said anything. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll put it back up. You bet. Go back to you bet. I'll do it. Yes, uh, you have a question. I would like to find out the. How, how does the enrollment done? Is that through cell enrollments or through the records and register office? Great, so her question was, how does the enrollment happen for these courses? So we're doing a batch add-in because I have manually added in a lot of students before and it takes about a half hour to an hour. So these were all batch add-in, but now, now that we can do a section, now that we've started, so each academic year, now the advisors can go add them in themselves, and they'll maybe have 10 or 15 at once. But we kind of did all the legwork for them right at the front. Okay. Anybody else? Oh. Last one. All right. You can ask me after. You talked, a, oh, this is really loud. Uh, you talked a little bit about students creating interest groups around things like research. Mm -hmm. Did you facilitate that at all? Like, how did you actually, what kind of space did you provide for that? Um, how did they start that process? Okay, so she asked a question about student interest groups, especially around research. So this is something that psychology has just started. They do have a research page inside the course. Um, that tells them about all the different faculty in the department and what their research interests are. And then they're using the discussion board to highlight them and then saying, oh, Professor so-and-so has research opportunities for you and kind of shopping those around so that students know that's where they're starting. So I hope that answered your question. Well, thank you. Wait, okay, I know we're done now, but will everyone stand up and get in the middle and I'll throw this shirt back, you know, like at the wedding, you know, backwards. But, and whoever gets it, 
You're awesome. And if you asked a question or said anything, come get a taffy. Okay, I'm going to go. Come on, you know you want one. It's an awesome shirt. Be the solution. That's our motto. Okay. Are we ready? One, two, three. I don't know who's going to get it. <gasps> All right.